I'm just gonna put it out there that I am not going to be participating in the Salem witch trials of Taylor Swift that every other conservative seems to be egging on. There's actually something else I've been wanting to talk about. So Taylor, this one's for you. I've been a Swifty for 13 years. I've attended five tours. I've streamed your music religiously, bought overpriced merch, and waited outside of Target in the freezing cold just to buy your albums. You might not recall, but we've met twice, and the handwritten thank you note I received from you is still one of my most precious possessions. For decades, I felt like we've grown up together, from high school to our 30s, sort of like we're friends. The thing is, I'm a Christian, and I'm conservative. Even if you wouldn't consider me to be a friend, I consider you to be mine. And I don't like to see friends being taken advantage of. You've worked so hard to prove to the world that you haven't achieved your level of success due to anyone but yourself. By re-releasing your albums after Scooter Braun sold the masters to your music, you took steps to make sure no one else could hold that power over you or your brand ever again. I've always wanted to own my own music since sure. I started making my music. I made it very clear that I wanted to be able to buy my music. That opportunity was not given to me and it was sold to somebody else. And so I just figured I was the one who made this music first. I can just make it again. Yeah. So that's what we're doing. Uh, Do you even realize that you've just become a puppet to someone else? Let's take a look at the stages leading up to your political outspokenness and tell me if you see what I see. Stage one, you were canceled in 2016 over the leaked Kimye phone call. Okay, now what if later in the song, I was also to have said, uh, I made her famous. Yeah. But it's gotta tell the story the way that it happened to you and the way that you experienced it. Like you honestly didn't know who I was before that. I can't wait to hear it. You're, you're ready to trend. That's all I can say. You seemingly consent to Kanye releasing his song Famous, which insinuates that the only reason you're as big as you are today is because Kanye West interrupted you on stage at the 2009 VMAs. Thank you so much for giving me a chance to win a VMA award. I... Yo, Taylor, I I'm really happy for you. I'm gonna let you finish. But Beyonce had one of the best videos of all time. One of the best videos of all time. Once the song came out, you were irate. So you released a statement claiming you weren't explicitly warned that Kanye would be calling you a bitch. Kim and Kanye then released the private phone conversation that was recorded without your knowledge. Social media interpreted this leaked video as proof that Taylor Swift is a liar and a snake, which led to hashtag Taylor Swift is over party trending on Twitter. How could you forget? It was perhaps your biggest low ever. The mainstream media reveled in your demise and piled on for weeks. The world band together in agreement that your image and career were subsequently over and you were perceived as untrustworthy with an overplayed victim complex. Stage two, then rock bottom settled in. You lost the affirmation, adoration, and love that have fueled and validated your very existence. For an entertainer type personality, a celebrity's entire self-worth hinges on how they're perceived by the public. You were no exception. You've even said it yourself that you live for people applauding you. We're people who got into this line of work because we wanted people to like us, because we were intrinsically insecure, because we liked the sound of people clapping because it made us forget about how much we feel like we're not good enough. Culture's turn on you was so severe that you consider disappearing altogether and never putting yourself in the spotlight again. And for an entire year, you were never even seen in public. But you knew that solitude wasn't a viable solution because with that comes loneliness, which isn't sustainable for someone who's driven by eminence. Like any star trying to rehab their image after a PR crisis, you needed a plan to introduce yourself back into the public eye and win back not only disillusioned fans, but Hollywood peers as well. You needed to be a mastermind. Stage three, win the admiration back 
by any means. In every game, what's the strategy of any winning player? To maximize their win probability by minimizing the risk of being voted out. Taylor, you know that a key component of your survival in the game of celebrity and relevance is to choose to surround yourself with the most powerful army in society because this will insulate and protect you from outside threats of cancellation. Now, which group has the power to cancel? The political left. They are the cultural zeitgeist controlling the tone of pop culture and every media institution, both on legacy media and social media. They police conversation around what we are allowed to say and not say. And of course, they oversee Hollywood. You knew that if you rebuilt your persona and identity based around leftist ideology, you would be protected and defended by the only people more powerful than you. They're the same people who arguably weren't willing to defend you in your first round of cancellation only because you hadn't fully immersed yourself into their church by publicly declaring their doctrine yet. Stage four, prove yourself to the church of the woke. Christianity requires you to deny yourself to follow God. Leftism requires you to deny God and follow yourself. In order to prove your dedication and seriousness, it required you to publicly abandon principles you had acknowledged before, principles that the left hates. Things like political neutrality, depicting the nuclear family to be a societal norm, and the basic biology of two genders, to name a few. You stopped publicly celebrating the 4th of July after 2016 because that was deemed sinful by progressives and you cited your disillusionment with America as the reason. In 2019, you told Elle that you saw so many issues that put our most vulnerable citizens at risk and felt like you had to speak up to try and help make a change. Wow, so the unborn? No, the LGBTQ community. This is a fan voted award. So you voting for this video means that you want a world where we're all treated equally under the law. Last time I checked, the gays get a whole month of every leading corporation and brand in the country changing their profile pictures and packaging for their agenda. I can't recall that ever happening for aborted children. You depicted conservatives as fat, toothless, and stupid in the music video for You Need to Calm Down. And you publicly came out in favor of a progressive candidate over a conservative one because the conservative one didn't match your Tennessee values. The test? Humiliate and isolate anyone with unapproved ideas. Result? Aced. Stage five. Cancel us the way you were canceled. In your Netflix documentary, Miss Americana, you explain to your team that you don't care about losing conservative fans because it's for some greater good. For 12 years, we've not got involved with politics or religion. Back in the presidential election, I was in such a horrendous place that I wasn't gonna pop my head out of the sand for anything. Hey, Matt, imagine if we came to you and said, hey, we've got this idea that we could halve the number of people that come to you next to us. The other thing, just for the security. So you think Taylor Swift comes out against Trump? I don't care if they write that. I'm sad that I didn't two years ago, but I can't change that. I'm saying right now that this is something that I know is right, and you guys, I need to be on the right side of history. Yeah, and if he Taylor. doesn't win, then at least I, I, at least I tried. It really is a big deal. The irony is you put all of your eggs in the basket of the left, the first group in line to cancel when there is even a hint of deviation from their groupthink. Conservative Swifties like me love and support you for your art, whether you're liberal or not. Hell yes I am. I certainly don't hinge someone's entire character on who they vote for. Do I think you're deceived? Yes, but I don't think you're inherently evil. On the contrary, leftist Swifties believe anyone who thinks slightly differently than them are inherently evil people who must be completely eradicated from society. They're all for a feminist Taylor Swift with no kids and no husband who likens it all to 1950s shit. But should you decide to marry and settle down to put your marriage and kids first, I don't think they'd be very happy with you. I'm not angry, but I am confused. 
In an effort to never face cancellation again, you alienated and distanced yourself from the OnlyFans who would never do that to you. And you aligned yourself heavily with the ones who are analyzing your every step with a magnifying glass, looking for any indication that you've not done or said the exact right perfect thing in their eyes, which by the way, changes day by day. I'm not even asking you to not share your views, whether you authentically came to those conclusions on your own or not. And I think conservatives who ask celebrities to not speak on politics are really ignorant to how culture at large has shifted. It's simply no longer acceptable to not share your views. What I'm asking is for you to not cut conservative Swifties out of your life for our views, because when you inevitably get canceled again, you're gonna want someone to be there still. You're gonna need people who will listen to your music. And I'd also like to point out that the side you're putting all your trust in are the very ones who bought the masters to your music. Have you ever considered connecting those dots? Are you even aware of who literally owns your voice? My entire catalog was sold to Scooter Braun's Ithaca Holdings in a deal that I'm told was funded by the Soros family 